Okay, so models of the mind, the pyramid model. Now, before we can even begin to think about hypnosis, hypnotherapy, and helping people and solving problems and helping people achieve what they want, we need some kind of model of the mind to work with. So this one's called the pyramid model. There's two we're going to use. This is the pyramid model. Let's just say that this represents the mind. There's a, an arbitrary divide between the top part, which is the conscious mind, and the lower part, which we call the subconscious or the unconscious mind. I will define those terms more later on. And in a way, it's as if they're two, not separate entities, but two distinct, almost personalities in a way. So the top part, the conscious mind, is the part that's very uh, uh, aware, obviously, can handle six or seven bits of information at any one time. The unconscious handles pretty much everything else. And let's just say that there are things that happen in life. There are events that happen. Each of these represents such an event. And these events come in through the conscious mind and get stored as memory in our unconscious mind or our subconscious. And they are stored there so that if ever we need to access them, they can be retrieved in some way. Right? So something in the present day triggers a memory, a piece of information. So we know what to do, how to be, how to how to function in the world. So we're not continually learning for new, uh, learning things new. We know how to how to do, how to be, how to sit in a chair, how to use a pen, how to how to get on a bus, all those kind of things. So we're constantly storing information and retrieving it. And that's okay, but let's put some emotion around something. Let's say we've got a nice happy feeling. If a happy experience comes along, then generally speaking, that will give us happy memory of it, store a positive feeling inside. So that when that kind of thing is triggered in some way, the, then over there we, we have a positive experience. But what if there's something else? What if it's not a happy moment? What if there's an unpleasant experience happens? What if lightning strikes in some way? I mean, there's a, a stress, a trauma, something, something fearful. Then exactly the same thing happens. So the idea gets stored in our subconscious, our unconscious as a reference point. Now we have this kind of feeling stored inside as well. Like a lightning strikes feeling, whatever that may be. So when something else comes along and triggers that feeling, whatever that may be, fear, anger, stress, tension, worry, then again the same feeling rises up and we have an experience of it in the physical world, in the practical world. And this happens extremely fast, something like two thousandths of a second, the, the speed of these thoughts here. Where information coming in accesses stuff inside and creates an experience that we are then consciously aware of. Something we're thinking, something we're feeling, an emotion in some way, shape or form. And so we find ourselves having a response to certain situations, whatever that may be. And again, this is going on continuously, somewhere in the region of 60,000 times a day we're dipping in and out as our thoughts are being processed. Now let's just clear that up a little bit and take a look at what happens to your average person who doesn't, who isn't aware of this process. So something happens in life, but actually everything down at this level, the subconscious, unconscious, really gets hidden away or tucked away. Most people are just not aware of what goes on there. So essentially, there's something, some kind of input, some kind of object, some information. It could be a dog. It could be needles. It could be people. I'm giving you some very typical fears here. Let's keep it very simple, first of all. Some kind of information comes into the person's conscious mind. And what they experience is a feeling or an emotion over here. And the feeling or emotion makes them obviously want to do or not do something. But some kind of incoming information gives them some kind of response over their thoughts, feelings, emotions that they don't like. Uh, this is going on in a positive sense, of course, as well. But for now, I'm going to just talk as, uh, on, the, on the problems, as if this is a very simple fear, first of all. Now, when someone comes to see you for help, essentially, this is where they're at. They've got some kind of incoming information that's causing them a problem, causing them to feel something they don't want to feel, think something they don't want to think, or do something they don't want to do. Or be able to think 
feel or do something they'd like to uh, think, feel or, or be able to do. So these are very general situations and this is the general situation that occurs in most people. But let's have a look what they try and do because what most people then try and do is they try their hardest, most people, to avoid the thing they fear, the things that stresses them in some way. But unfortunately, it doesn't work like that because there's something about our inner minds, our unconscious mind, that draws to us the very thing we seek to avoid. So whatever we seem to fear or dread will seem to pop up more and more. There are different reasons for how this happens. We'll go into that later. But whatever you store inside, whatever you focus on, will tend to come back to you in some way, shape or form. And it begins to form a loop. So whatever you store inside of you, whatever you hold inside, you cannot avoid it because it will seek to bring experiences back to you, to bring that very feeling up to the surface and give you the experience of it. In this example, I'm using a uh, like a negative feeling here. Same with positive ones too. But most people come to you for problems. So this is the system that occurs. And it could be anything, anything that creates some kind of negative feeling, any kind of bad feeling. Let's just talk about those for a moment. Anything that someone experiences will be stored inside in some way, shape or form if they don't process it properly. If the ideas are kept there within you, then that feeling will bring more of the same. And our job as hypnotherapists, as helping people, is to change that system for people, to change things from cloudy days into sunny days, so that people have more, more smiley days, more sunny days, to put it in these very, very simple terms. How we do that will come on to soon, but for now let's simplify it down again because there's one more element I'd like to introduce, and this is possibly the most important element. And that sits just here, somewhere between the conscious and unconscious. And we're going to be talking about this a lot as we spend some time together. And this element here is called your beliefs. Your beliefs are a person's belief system. Because actually... It doesn't really matter what has happened in the past to somebody. It doesn't matter what information they have stored within them. It's what it causes them to believe that is important. It's how that information contributes to a person's belief system. The same thing can happen to two different people and they both interpret it in different ways. It causes them to believe different things about themselves. So when information comes in through the conscious mind, your conscious mind does not have to go through every single moment in your life. Your inner mind, your unconscious, does not have to go through every single moment in your life. That would be extremely inefficient. What happens is your conscious mind just dips into your belief system. It's like a handy reference section. And says, well, what do I believe about this? When some kind of information comes into your mind, it just says, what do I believe about this? What do I know? What do I believe? What can I expect to happen here? And that will be supported by evidence from within the subconscious there for you know, feelings and emotions of past memories and past experiences. Those may well be there, but it is the beliefs that are important. Now what I'd like you to do as a first exercise is to sketch out this, like a simple version of this diagram to sketch it out in your own way. Really simple. The one I've done has been quite complicated, but keep it really, really simple, like a simple version of this one just here. I want you to be able to sketch it out to someone and explain it to them. And if they have any questions you can't answer, make a note of them and submit them either to me by email or on the forum. It would be the best place so others can see the answer there. Because what I want is for you to be able to explain this in your own words, in your own way, so that you understand it completely and the way to know whether you understand it completely is to see whether you can teach it or not. Okay? We always find out how well we know something when we come to have to teach it. So the first thing I'd like you to do is to sketch this diagram out in your own way 
using whichever symbols you want and as simple as you want. Sometimes when I do this, it's, it's just a triangle with a stick man and a stick person at the bottom and top and some circles that represent the events and a squiggly line around the circles to represent emotion. That's the simplest way I do that. So find your own way to do this. And then what I'd like you to do is have a look at this system, just thinking about it as it is right now. Forget about hypnosis, hypnotherapy, f forget about any kind of technique. Just think on this system alone. How could you begin to bring about some kind of change? What would you need to do in order to initiate some kind of change in a person? Which angles could you come in at? Which areas could you look at to see if you can change? What could you actually do? Think about this as a system that somehow you need to influence or change. And what I'd like you to do is just make a note of those. And if you want to, it'd be great if you could put them on the forum as your first uh, first attempts. If you want to keep it private, that's entirely up to you. But please do this exercise. Please take a moment now to do this. In my classroom, my classroom students, this is exactly what we do. I draw this diagram and ask each of them to give me some ideas. What do you think could be done in this situation to begin to bring about a change so that when information comes in, the person has a different experience? Good. So have a go at that, get on with that. And once you've done that, then we can move on to the next exercise. Thank you.